Hi, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are again in our own homes, practicing social distancing and keeping ourselves safe from um, the people who aren't, I guess. I don't know. I mean, you know, yes, here we are. We're all taking responsibility. Um, I think it's really important for people back home to understand that although I like to criticize all things, <laughs> Um, you know, I think you can both be criticizing uh, the response from a very centralized government level, but then also just be taking your own, you know, reasonable precautions from yep. when this started. I was wearing masks and yep. gloves. If I was yeah, you, you were one of the. I thought I would Go ahead, sorry. Reach, you know, any place that I thought, you know, we would actually interact with people. If I'm out on a trail, I've been doing a lot of hiking. This I know. Kind of not the worst of things. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking. I got like my, my lower le uh, raised beds are all done. You know, all raked out. I mean, I haven't put mulch down because I don't want to. I, I think I'm jumping the gun because we bought, we did go to Lowe's on whatever day, Sunday, and bought 20 bags of mulch, which Dan thinks is absolutely insane. Um, but that's because every time I take back a little bit more of this property, it needs more mulch. So why not buy it when it's two dollars a bag? Um, but I did rake and I don't want to mulch too much because the little plants need time. I think I feel like I'm suffocating them. Um, but it was nice to be able to do that now at the beginning of April, even though it's still going to rain. I mean, it's going to be crappy for the rest of the week until the weekend, but at least I, I feel like I'm getting outside and, uh, we haven't taken any super exciting hikes. We took Jenny for a walk over the weekend, but, um, I, as I said to you the other day, I, I do want to get up to Cedar Swamp um yes. local yes and then of course you brought us you and dan with all the social distancing that needed to happen you brought us some beautiful little plant that well I you know I, we went to, like I, I mean we're all of i think we're all avoiding going places that we don't need to go you know if you don't need to go to the grocery store you don't go i mean i have realized that dan and i probably used to go to the grocery store four times a week you know like we that's just we live in a city and we would just go, like I'd take food out of the freezer and then be like, yeah, I don't really want that. I'll go to the grocery store. So now. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite. I like to bulk shop. We buy almost everything online. I go to my farmer's stall once a week, mostly because I order fish yeah. from him, Johnson's Golden Harvest at Exit 10 and hooks it. Uh, but other than that, you know, I like to buy a lot of stuff. I have my deep freeze. So yeah. nothing much has really changed. It's just funny. I I but feel like every time I go to the market, I spend a crazy amount of money, but I think that's because we're not going, like, I might be spending a lot for that one trip, but I'm also not making those three extra trips. So I don't, I don't know. Dan does, Dan keeps track of all the money. So I don't know if I've gone crazy on budget. Um, but when we went to Lowe's. Well, for I, everyone back home, don't go crazy. This too shall pass. It will. Um, you know, we have till May 4th with this stay at home, um, order and, you know, I, I'm one of those people I'm planning events, right? Yep. So I have uh, the porcupine freedom festival coming yep. up in June. I had to talk to the, the campground owner last night, uh, up at Rogers campground, which is the largest campground here in New Hampshire. And, you know, he was just expressing so much frustration as well, where, you know, he said, they, they, you know, a lot of the resorts up north are closed. Yep. He said, you know, with this, this stimulus money that's going to come out, he's very concerned that he's not actually going to be able to hire workers right. because they'll make more money on the dole than they're going to make. Well, that's, that is a serious concern. And I'm going to be upfront and honest with everybody. So I filed for unemployment. Um, even before the order to close, we had already taken a week off because business was just slow and we, you know, it was just a good, we were starting to worry. Um, but now that we are a non-essential business and we're actually closed till May 4th, um, I filed for unemployment. I think I'm on like, we're, maybe the third week, this would be the third week that I'd be unemployed or furloughed or whatever we're gonna call it. Um, what's fun, not funny. So I get, that you get 50% of whatever your earnings were, right? Which is fine. You know, I, I, I'm not your normal person and I, you know, I've got Dan, everybody should have a Dan. Um, but Dan takes care of us financially and I work to provide us with things that, you know, little extras, but, um, 
once the federal money comes, that's the part that I'm like, who thought this was necessary? I could understand if they were sending money to say, we're going to pay the other 50%. So if you were making five, taking home $500 a week and New Hampshire paid you $250, the federal government paid you $250 through the end of July, that would have made sense. But instead, what they're going to do is they're going to send everybody who's getting unemployment $600 a week. So I'm like, wait a minute. So am I going to get $600 on top of 50% of my normal earnings? Because that means I'm making, that's crazy. So I, 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 I'm not sure I'm found understanding what, what the point of it is. I hope that these people, I hope that the people who actually are dependent on their paycheck week to week, which is a lot of people, will take all the extra money that they possibly are getting and do something positive with it. I mean, like pay off your debt or bank it for your next month's rent, because I'm just concerned that people are going to be like, look at me, I've got extra money. And then come July or August, when that stops, they're going to be like, well, wait a minute, where's that? I can't, I need more money now. Well, and I mean, I think that's a legitimate concern. I, I think that sadly, part of what we are seeing um, from an institutional or system, systemic sort of approach is a lot of these solutions are things that actually punish people who are responsible, yep. who live within their means, who, you know, have jobs, who are productive, who've planned, you know, I have a deep freeze full of food. I have, you know, uh, I, like I, I sort of plan for these eventualities. And so, you know, um, we saved up money and we went in with, with a, a group of people to buy an investment property. And we only bought it maybe like four months ago. And now we're hearing, Oh, you know, the tenants are like, yeah, we're not going to pay the rent. And I'm right. like, well, we can't pay the mortgage if you right. don't pay the rent. You know, well, it's, I, it's like, you know, we're trying to level up in life too. And now we're in this situation where it's like, well, you know, if you're, if you're a responsible human being, somehow, you know, you just, you, you get the short end of the stick right. and no one would run their budgets this way, but somehow, you know, we think it's fine to just run the, the, the government with, you know, trillions, $2.3 trillion. Right. And they're talking about another 2 trillion. Yeah. This is like funny money. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, t speaking of landlords and properties and whatnot. So when they first made the, the order that nobody could be evicted for not, for, or, and there, and nobody could be foreclosed on, I wasn't really even sure if the government could actually tell the banks that they couldn't foreclose on people, but whatever. But let's just stick with landlords, right? So you couldn't evict people. Well, the governor had to issue a new order this week or this pa in the past week saying, oh, wait, you can't evict people for non-payment of rent. You can still evict them if they are, you know, damaging your property or if they abandon your property. Because what was happening is landlords, I mean, I, 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 I imagine you might get the same email I get. I get an update, even though I'm not a landlord, I get this update about, um, in this landlord group and, um, things that people don't necessarily think about that things impact. For instance, uh, we already have a housing shorting, shortage in, in New Hampshire. Uh, rents are already high and people are always concerned about that. So now what's happening, because we've said that people can't be evicted for non-payment of rent, which I understand because if you're like me, and, or not like me, if you're somebody who is dependent on your income and you've been furloughed, even though you've been filing for unemployment, you still haven't seen a penny because I haven't seen a penny. So if I didn't have, I mean, if I didn't have any money, where would I be getting food? You know, like where would I even be getting my grocery money from? But you've got property owners who say they had somebody that was already moving out April 1st. Now they have this vacant unit that needs repairs or needs to be cleaned or all these different things. Then they have to have the concern about bringing people in to look at these places and they'd be renting to people who immediately don't have to pay their rent. And the biggest concern was that deadbeat tenants, we're not talking about the rev average person, but the person who's going to screw the landlord the most is the guy who's not going to pay his rent right now because you can't evict him. And when the ban is lifted in whenever, you know, when that rule's lifted, 
he's just going to leave and go someplace else because he's a deadbeat anyways. So now that landlord's on the hook for how, who knows how many months of rent that he, the only way he could possibly recover it is by going to small claim court. And we know that that is like futile. There's no way you're, those landlords are going to live. So many landlords are choosing to leave their places empty because it's less of a risk to not have somebody in there than to have to go in and fix it again after somebody stayed there and not, and not um, paid rent. It, it, and so all yeah. this is doing is making the rents go higher and the, the availability actually go down. So sometimes yeah, I think, I think that, things. you know, certainly in this situation, one of the things we're, we're definitely seeing and something that we need to explore is, is, the unintended consequences of things, right? Right. Like everyone understands we're in this difficult situation and everyone's trying to do the best of it. Right. But the reality is that the best solution to any of these problems is the answer is freedom. What's the question? The answer is liberty. What's the question? So, you know, if we allow people to make the right decision for them then one has to assume in the aggregate that is going to be the best decisions, right? So when we have this sort of centralized control where we're saying there, you know, this is the way, I think that, you know, we, we're going to, we're going to have to unpack this stuff and people are going to have to be open to criticizing the response that has happened. I mean, we have seen the 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 predictions you know be downgraded by magnitudes of order right. which is great i mean don't get me wrong it's wonderful it's but it does make you question why we're doing some of the things that we're doing well yes and the thing is once again if we had uh, you know if we approach these things as advisories and hey we're here government you know we're here to help so we'd like to advise you that you need to do these things and we think these are best practices and you know let's just be quite frank they took a, a lot of the things they originally said were wrong and you know i ignored them and did different things and it turns out i was right you know that's why i have a podcast called told you so folks <laughs> but so you know so i think that that this can be both a learning opportunity and and you know maybe hopefully a a realization for for people at home that you know we need to make the best decisions for ourselves based on information that's available so speaking of bad decisions and people being a little bit more aware and this is something that i i've been really trying to not only um explain to people, but just make people stop and think. I mean, we have plenty of time on our hands to stop and think, so why not do that more often? Um, I struggle to find people who think that right now, while people are furloughed from work, while they're stuck in their homes, while they're waiting for, whether they're waiting for their $1,200 federal check or their unemployment to kick in, or they're worried about whether they need to wear a mask or if they have to wait in line at the grocery store. There's so many things that people are worried about right now. The idea of saying to the taxpayers of Manchester, we're, we think right now is when we should raise your taxes. I, that to me is absolutely, yeah, I, somebody, like I joke about things all the time when like we're playing board games and there's a bad design on a print. Right. And I say, you know, what's really bad is somebody made that decision and somebody approved it. So the mayor, Joyce Craig, somebody, she doesn't have any advisors that said, you know, I don't know if right now is when we should be raising taxes. People aren't well, going to fly. It, it, so it, I, it, it makes my brain like explode because right now the city should be saying, what can we as the government do to alleviate the burden that is being put on our people it's not yeah, it, I, it's not not by taking I, more of our money not by spending millions and millions of dollars more when we really can get away with not doing that well so so you know let's let's unpack that a little bit first of all i do think that uh the mayor should be criticized for several things the first one is the decision to not furlough non-essential right. 
employees. So, so li- we let's take the library, the library. But we're paying the librarians. Now, we're paying, you know, and that's, it's not just a librarian. There's a whole staff at the library system. Yeah, no, I understand. I'm just using it as an example. So the decision was made. First of all, we're told that we're all in this together. But then when you actually unpack it, we aren't in this together. We, as the citizens, you know, the subjects, the, you know, people who pay the bills are told you have to do this. You're non-essential. You're whatever. But, you know, everyone in the city is essential. I've seen quotes that have said six, uh, about out of every 10 city employees, six are essential, four are non-essential. Right. Begs the question, why do we have four non-essential positions in the almost first half place. the position? Okay, but that's a conversation for a different day. Then we hear our property taxes are going up. Right. Then we hear we've secretly signed a teacher's contract. And I understand, I'm sure the teachers must be frustrated yep. and all of that stuff but looking on the bright side of things you know this could have taken 10 years distance learning to roll out if if we were lucky and now we managed to do it in two weeks and i'm hoping that people will embrace this and kind of go wow you know what changing things in life isn't that hard you know i can do it if i set my mind to something and instead of this sort of um uh, like there's almost this culture of fear of change, uh, death of curiosity, you know, uh, not wanting to try new things and all of that, right? Which is stagnation. And that is like the worst sort of headspace that you could be living in. And so if we take this COVID situation and we turn it on its head and we look at it as opportunities, then we can say, wow, this is awesome. Maybe teachers, maybe a bunch of teachers figure out they'd rather do distance learning. Right. Maybe we can like totally change the model. But yeah, so they had their nice little, you know, secret contract that happened that was signed on on Wednesday, last Wednesday night. So while we're in this together, we're being told one thing and we're being told to sacrifice and we're being told our taxes are going up and we're being told we're non-essential. And then the state is like, oh, by the way, give us more money. We're going to give you less services and we're paying all these people not to work. So, yeah, you know, it, if you're at home, I'm running for office. <laughs> Tammy's running for I know, office. I'm going to have to get a better backdrop. I don't have any signs back there. I need one. <laughs> well, I was like, never let a crisis go That's to waste, right? right? <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, I think it's really important for people to think about this because, you know, we are going to have an election and, um, we should be thinking about, you know, is the response the right response? Um, you know, we, we, we've seen, I don't know if you followed this, but you know, there were two, there was a death and a shooting yesterday, Manchester you know what PD bugs killed me about somebody. that? Like, I, I'm in this, isn't just in this particular instance and it has nothing to do with us being stuck at home or anything is, I always feel like we don't get the story. If it, so the guy, the guy who was killed by the Manchester police, um, had supposedly, uh, started that fire that took, there was a big fire on, I forget what street. Um, and they had said they're on the lookout for, be on the lookout for this gentleman in this white truck or whatever. And the police came upon the truck over on Lakeshore Drive. And, um, and they said something about there was, uh, that he was suspected of having a fire. And there's like a lot of this. And then, then he's just dead. And I always wonder like, okay, so could somebody please tell me as the citizen, just tell me so that I feel less bad about it. Tell me that you pulled over because you saw the vehicle and the guy pulled out a gun and was pointing it at the police officer. Like, show me that the use of force that was put forward was justified. I don't want to just get a letter from the AG's office saying it's justified because it's always justified. But like, what is the actual circumstance where the police take justice into their own hands and kill somebody. Now we don't even know, like, if he did start this fire, which I'm going to make the presumption that he did because there was a reason they were looking for this particular person so quickly after the fire. Somebody obviously saw him start the fire. Um, but he still has the right to, you know, a fair trial and everything. I, we just yeah, yeah, him. like due process, you know. I mean, what we've seen happen uh, nationwide is – 
there's uh, summary executions are now happening uh, per policy and per protocol. So my concern is that unlike any other criminal investigation where someone is um, a photo, when I got arrested, they slapped my photo and my mugshot and my name, you know, went in the paper. But when there's any kind of incident where there's a state employee, you know, that is immediately secret. So yeah. what you'll see now, um, and just, you know, for people who, who maybe didn't follow the news, so there were two police shootings, uh, officer-involved shootings, which is a term I take offense with. Uh, you know, I think we should just call it what it is. One human being shot another human being, and the question becomes, why? Right. And, you know, if that happens in any kind of private scenario, then we unpack that why, right? And that's why we have the government so that they can look at the facts and we can come to some kind of adjudication. What is now happening uh, when we have our paramilitary <laughs> um, police is the second something happens, they clamp down and then according to protocol, everything is now, we can't tell you anything and we won't tell you anything. The investigations are not treated like a standard investigation for any other criminal case. Uh, the, the people who are interviewed, so the people who are involved in a shooting, so the people who, who uh, discharge their firearms and others, get a week minimum to get together and figure out their story. Right. Um, I think anyone who's back home knows that in a normal criminal investigation, you actually want to take everyone who was involved put them in separate places and immediately interview them so that you can get the facts of the matter as opposed to a good story. So my, my prediction is, you know, as, as is always the case, they'll wait about a year. Uh, there will be a secret report, but not secret. I mean, it'll just very quietly come out on the AG's um, uh, a website. Uh, yesterday, when I, when I read this story, I actually went because I was like, oh, wow, you know, we haven't heard anything about that three-person killing that the DEA and some local agencies nope. did last year at the, at the hotel out near the airport. So I actually went and checked the website to see, oh, did a report come out? What did they find? What happened there? There's no report. Uh, we, we still don't know. And that's been more than a year right so you know so for calling out joyce craig on leadership in the city i will you know i'll call her out on that as well you know it's been a year and three days since three people were murdered and no one knows what happened or why they were here or you know what went on and we do know that tear gas was deployed, that there was so much tear gas that was used that they had to close down the hotel to air it out for months on end. Like these are serious situations with serious allegations. And basically now, uh, you know, just to, to keep people safe back home, uh, it seems like I, I'm gonna be, I can try 91A this, I probably wouldn't get the documents. They would just tell me, oh, you know what? We need to know everything about you but even though we purport to work for you, we don't have to tell you anything, right? That's how it works now. And you know, the AG's office, who are the people who are investigating these things, are the same people who are literally fighting at taxpayers' expense to keep a list of untrustworthy police officers secret from us. So I don't know who in this scenario we're supposed to trust, but I'm not feeling the warm and fuzzies. I'm sorry. Um. My clock's telling me we have three minutes. Um, I miss Brendan, because we usually, when we're in the studio, we have secrets behind the screen that nobody else can see that tells us our time and things like that. Um, back to, I'm not trying to, I just want to get back before we run out. Um, if you think that the city should not be raising your taxes, if you think this is the wrong time to be increasing spending and increasing the burden on the taxpayers, which means it's on the landlords, which means it's on the renters, um, there's a petition out there. I posted it on the Manch Talk Facebook page this morning so that um, people could sign it. Um, it's out there all over the place on Facebook, but if you can't find it, you can email me at manchtalk at gmail.com and I'll send you a link to it. Um, but go out and sign it and tell the mayor and the aldermen that, you know, this isn't it, the time. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can find ways to save 
to sp not spend money in just this one year so that we have a chance to recover a little bit um, financially. Oh, I put it back to the envelope thing and I saved over a million dollars just by being like, bing, 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 yep. bing, we don't need this. If there's a lot of, there is a lot of discretionary spending in our city budget. That's just the reality of it all. Um, the other thing I want to remind people is that even though we have a stay at home order, um, even Governor Sununu was saying there's nothing wrong with getting out there and taking a walk. Uh, just be, be safe. You know, don't crowd other people. Stay six feet away from other people. There's great places in Manchester. Uh, the rail trail is wonderful. Um, Livingston Park is wonderful. Cedar Swamp's great. Um, I know you went up Mount Unkanunuk the other day. That's a great hike if you want to actually have a little bit of a challenge. Um, Woo, and that was straight up the mountain. It is. I it's had a real hike. horses in my legs um, afterwards. I was like, if, damn, that was a workout. If you do go out and walk and you want to share pictures on Facebook, Governor Sununu created a hashtag home, oh, home hike challenge. Um, so basically reminding people that we should stay closer to home and not venture off into other communities to just try to squell whatever it is we're trying to squell. Um, so get out there, enjoy the weather. There's going to be crappy for the rest of the week, but the weekend's supposed to be dry. Um, if you have any questions, email us or you can follow us on Facebook at uh, Manch Talk. Otherwise, um, I think Carla and I are going to go back to our, you know, home life for the rest of the week <laughs> um we'll see you. which we mean we're gonna put our pajamas back on and no, i uh, think i still have my <laughs> my t-shirt pants on um i am actually gonna go back out and work in the yard again today and get some takeout lunch from unity cafe um nice. a great salad I'm, on gonna, um, I'm gonna go for a nice long walk while That's the right. sun's out and probably right. do some gardening this afternoon as well so take care stay safe and stay healthy and we'll see you next week bye peace out